Um, I don't know, ma'am. People just report these kind of things. And you're in a neighborhood. Yeah, why do you think I'm here? Because I normally parked in industrial areas. Okay. Intentionally. Is that because you're homeless? Well, yes, because I lived in an apartment and the Boise Police Department couldn't do their job about the harassment, the organized harassment that went on there and the drug ring and other criminal activity. And so I had to leave to live in a car. Okay? So how... Why why'd you leave? There's... I just told you. Yeah, but you said because of the harassment. Is it because you couldn't live with the harassment? Yeah, it was really, really bad. There were noise campaigns, construction campaigns. People smoked in their apartments. They smoked marijuana in the apartments. Okay. They uh, stalked me. It was it was really bad. I ha I started wearing body cameras. Did you maybe think about moving to a different apartment, much in a much safer neighborhood, much safer apartment complex? Um, I'm on social security. Okay. Are, are you on some type? And of I live in Boise. Are you on some type of housing assistance then? Is that? I live in a car. You just told me that, so I'm, it, try, I'm trying to get... Then you. why would you ask me if I was on housing assistance? Because uh, you said that you had faced some harassment and you had to move from your house. I'm I'm trying to get an idea. Maybe I can help you out. I mean, I... I, I got... Know. What I got from the Boise Police Department was gaslighting. Gaslighting? What? Yes. How were they gaslighting? Acting like I was making it up, like I was crazy or whatever. That's why I started wearing body cameras. Okay. Okay. And then um, the police, Boise police harassed me after I started living in the car. And, but before that, I've had cops run cars at me. But I, but I didn't have body cameras then. They're not going to do that now that they know I have body cameras. Run cars at you? Yes, and other people have as well. That has actually stopped now. Okay. I know who the uh, one of the cops that should be really easy to uh, find. Who's that? I don't know what his name is, but he used to he worked at City Hall uh -huh. under uh, Beater. Okay. He was a small older man who wore plain clothes. Okay. He should be easy to identify. He was in a Boise police car when he ran the car at me, and at first I thought, well, maybe he's joking around because I was joking around with him in the mayor's office but then I thought that's not funny for anybody to do it no no it's not funny it's certainly not funny if a cop is doing it it's concerning I totally agree with you yeah I totally agree with you well the, you're you don't are not reacting like the police that I normally have come and bother me well I, I don't know you ma'am my name's Ed by the way Nice to meet you, Ed. What's your name? Celia. Celia, nice to meet you, Celia. Yeah. I've been living in this car since October 1st of 2018. Okay, that's two. Yeah, I have running water. In your um, van? Uh, yeah, I have solar energy. So I have plenty of electricity. Okay. I have a bed. Um, I have a way to store food. I'm going to be getting a refrigerator here pretty soon, but I'm still using an ice chest. Okay. okay. And, uh, and I have a way to cook. All in your van? Yeah. It's all. Yeah. Wow. The, the reason I'm parked here is because this is Patrick Badgen's house, the guy that just wrote the new parking code. Oh, okay. That's why I wrote on the back of the car that I had moved 6,000 feet and and moved block face. Okay. Yeah. Because um, I've been parking in the same spot for about a year and a half in an industrial area. Okay. And uh, it's, it's the shoreline area, and they intentionally let it get really bad last summer. And I think that there was a contractor that was hired. Uh-huh to um, have a lot of people do harassment. It was unbelievable. Just unbelievable. So I have health problems and uh, they made me extremely ill with all the harassment, the lack of sleep, etc. Okay. Okay. And 
Have you sought any social service help? To, to what help would they, would they offer? They don't have any help. I'm a retired nurse. I already know that social workers do almost nothing. Uh-huh. And if you wanted something for your patient, the, the answer to that would be, we don't do that. Uh, and then the nurses would ha- in the ICU would have to try and figure out how to get what the patient needed when they went home. Okay. And um, I have, I do have PTSD. Okay. I was a nurse in Nome, Alaska, where um, the Native women were being raped and the police were not arresting the men, and the DA did nothing either. And I was outspoken about that. So um, I was harassed there. And the hospital is an IHS hospital. They were abusive to the Native people. And um, they also didn't do anything the way it was supposed to be done. Up in Nome, Alaska. Yeah. Nothing was done the way it was supposed to be done. So I was whistleblowing. And so um, a lot of hellacious crap came down and I became suicidal. Oh, that's, that's too bad. And um, have you have you looked into the catch program? <laughs> there is less than one percent openings in affordable housing. Uh-huh. So when they say they're putting people in housing, they're lying. Yeah. Add one plus one, and you'll get two. Yeah. So that's uh, total bullshit. I wrote an article about how. Uh, the Interface Sanctuary and the mission lied about how many people they put in housing. And if they'd put all those people in housing, there wouldn't be any homeless people left. Right, <laughs> and right. that was one year. So it's total bullshit. And what a, ra- a, a houseless radical is, is a person that knows the system is bullshit and the system is harmful to us. They're actually, it's actually slow murder. Uh, Everybody gets all upset when immigrants get put in horrible conditions, but it's perfectly fine for American citizens to be put in horrible conditions. So uh, the only way that there is a push to put people in housing is if there's a political catchword involved like veterans and now it's families. There's elderly and disabled people in the shelters that are dying. There's people, I wrote, I've written articles about um, how the uh, shelters are dangerous for infectious disease. And that day shelter was really bad. They had those Dyson blowers in the bathroom. Their nicknames are virus bombs. Virus bombs. <laughs> yeah, when you go in a public bathroom that has a blower in it, run. I, I don't like, I'm, I'm a germa, natural germaphobe. So before this whole COVID thing, I don't. I didn't like using those hand dryers, those air dryers. I, I yeah, paper. Like pa- paper. Yeah, paper is the be- best yeah. thing. Yeah. No, I. I believe me. I'm like I said, a natural germaphobe. Even before this whole COVID thing. You should have been a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> hey Celia, how long do you plan to stay here? Why do you need to know that? I thought this was a welfare check. I, again, I. <laughs> Checking up on you, making sure you're okay. But again, wanting to know if you're going to be here for an extended period of time because we have people that call us, say, "Oh, there's a suspicious van out there." Yes, yeah, so I'm an extremely suspicious person. There's no telling what I might write next or what videos I might make. Well, they don't know you. I, I know you now, but people, what just normal people walking around, aren't going to know that. They're they're not going to know you, obviously, and so they're going to call us. Just because I'm here, they're going to call you, you see. The people, you know, that Boise kind crap is total horse crap. Yeah. <laughs> people are not kind here. Um, they should be able to figure out the reason that a, a person that's living in a car would be parked in front of Bajan's house. They should be able to figure that out right now. Right. Because they're pissed off about the parking reg. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so... Uh, according to the parking regulation, I can't stay here for um, more than three days. Right. Yeah. So, again, that's why I was asking. But I'm in the shade. Are you going to stay here for an extended period of time, or I'm not? I'm not looking to to jam you up or nothing like that. I'm. Well, I'm why would you be asking me that then? 
to see if maybe I can help you. With what? Get to a, a different location where maybe you're not. You uh, think I don't know how to drive? No, no. I, I, <laughs> I got here by myself. Sure you got here by yourself. So maybe a, a location where you're not as open to the to the public. Oh, I'm intentionally here to be open to the public. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's why I'm here. Why do you think I wrote a message on the back of my car? Yeah, All right. yeah I'm, you know, but I can't stay here very long because I need to be in the sun because of my solar energy issue. Yeah, I was going to say, you're you're not in a good spot for the sun. Um, no. Uh, you got a tree. This was the only spot in front of his house. That's why I parked here. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not going to like it here, so. Yeah. You know what? There's plenty of... Uh, of uh, Other places where I can go that will where people will call the police and say there's a suspicious person there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you go to another place where you're not as open to the public, they're not going to call us. Cause well, sure how would I not be open to the public? In a car, you know, well, it, it, it's not a, like the car is going to be right. uh, and, and invisible. Let, let me reward that. Maybe in an area where you're uh, is not as uh, as pedestrian friendly to to the public, like a neighborhood, like a neighborhood. Yeah, I already told you that I was parking in an industrial area intentionally. And now, after this uh, parking code, that I told the city council uh -huh. that that was changing. Because I'm not going to go over there where there's a lot of problem people that I've been having huge problems with for a, forever that would harass me. Right. Jump on my car and shake it. Um, I just had on March 6th, somebody bashed the back window out of my car while I was in it sleeping. Right. The Boise Police Department, I asked several times for them to get the security footage from the business next door. They refused to do that and lied to me and told me somebody was going to call me, which is st a standard operating procedure for Boise Police Department. Right, right. Constant lies. You want to try parking it in front of City Hall? I mean, even. Oh, I, I actually do have plans to do that. Yeah, yeah, I do. I mean, that that's you'd have actually you would have more more sun over there. Um, then you, then you but I, but the problem is I'd have to pay uh, the parking meter to park there. Yeah. Well. But I could park there at night. There you go. As I don't think that falls under this new code. But yeah, I've got other places I want to park too. Okay. But right. so you you came here uh, just to try and manipulate me into leaving here. I Celia, I don't want to manipulate you in, in any way. <laughs> You've already demonstrated that's what you're doing. No, no. Uh, whenever somebody calls a report of a suspicious vehicle, we generally like to show up and check out the vehicle, make sure it's not stolen. For one. Why would I be suspicious? Well, your windows are all covered up. That's what happens when people live in cars. I, I know, but, you know, I realize the IQs in Idaho are really low. But um, everybody in the whole country knows if somebody has all their windows covered up, they're living in the damn car. Yeah. Most people don't know that, though. Yes, they do. Except for in Idaho, where people are not too bright. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so, you ever thought about parking like in a pretty area, like out in the country, out in the mountains? Oh, uh, yeah, out of Boise. You want me to leave? I'm not well, leaving I'm just, Boise. And yes, I, I'm just. I I'm actually do good. have had plans to do that, but because of the pandemic, all these people are going. Code four. All these people are going to the um, parks and stuff. I have maps for the BLM and everything. Yeah. But um, they act like assholes. Who, who does the people in Idaho? So they'll go out and they'll get drunk. They harass people. I've never seen people like this in my life. And I've worked in prisons. And I've worked in with um, mentally ill legal offenders in a psychiatric facility. I've never seen people like this. I actually have worked with psychopaths. And I've never seen people like this. Okay? So I've never seen people who 
have a combination of um, junior high adolescent development stage, the bullying that goes with that kind of thing, and such low IQs, um, and uh, thinking that uh, they're also special and they hate anybody that's not like them. I've never seen this in such a huge uh, subset of the population. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I, that was actually my plan. My plan was actually to travel around and leave, yeah. but I'm not leaving Boise until I get justice for the crap that's been done to me by this city. Okay. I got two unjust parking tickets, uh, one from a cop, one from parking enforcement. And there's been all kinds of corruption and manipulations around that with both of those agencies and the court system. Okay. One of the tickets was dropped because they sent the wrong paperwork in and then used that as an excuse to drop it because I have massive evidence that it's a, a wrongful ticket. Okay. The other one's at the level of the Idaho Supreme Court. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, and you must have gotten here today, right? Did you get here today? You know that because these people would have been calling you if I was here yesterday. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I just got the call today. <laughs> so I, you got the call. Yeah. You got one call. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if you got here yesterday, this morning. <laughs> that's why. That's why I'm asking, Julia. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, all right. Yeah, the city council said the streets belong to everyone. Okay, the streets belong to everyone. They belong to the public. That's why one of the reasons for this new code. Because we can't have people that live in cars, you know, parking for three days, leaving to go run errands and buy groceries and gas and stuff, and then coming back and parking in the same place again. Yep. We can't have that. So I'm spreading it out. All right. And so who called you, Badgent? No. It was a citizen that called. Oh, he's not a citizen. Somebody okay. Somebody that was just walking, walking by. Must have... so. And so why would they be concerned? It doesn't even make sense that somebody would be concerned. Yeah. Well, they see a van that's got its windows all covered up. And their IQ is low. So. Yeah. That raises some concern. Then, you're in a neighborhood with families that have kids. and. Well, I know, know uh, those people are all uh, in a higher caste than the people who live in cars or are homeless. We're all the in the untouchable class, yeah. caste. Yeah. I understand that very well about Boise. And they can all kiss my ass. All right, Celia. Well, um, just, and you know the regulations, right? You can't stay here more than three days, right? I said that to you. Okay. okay. No, I just. I actually have a high IQ, okay? <laughs> so. I, I see. I see that you do. So, so yeah, I've read the, the, the new code. Uh, that's why. I'm pissed off. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, all I ask Celia is you don't make any con because you said council member Badgen lives there. I th that's what it, I've the research that I did shows that he has a law practice here. Okay. So I'm assuming that he lives here. I, I don't know. You're. I'm, I'm I don't know for sure. I'm taking your word for it. I don't know for sure, but that's the information that I found. Okay. Yeah. Either way, I'm not bothering anyone. And um, it, this is apparently what Bo the city of Boise wants. Yeah, people yeah. Well, people to move around. And that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I, like I said... Uh, there's plenty of other places where you can go to that aren't. As no, there, there are. No, there aren't. Um, I mean, you, you can even go in front of city hall. You don't. You, you know what you're saying is well. These people here, they can't. They can't possibly have to look at somebody like you. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Uh, they're going to look at me because I'm going to be around. Yeah. You're aren't pissing you me right? off even more. 
Is there anything I can do to help you out? You're not going to do anything to help me. I've been in Boise long enough to know the only thing that will happen with the Boise Police Department is harm. And I've documented it. I have enough video to make several documentaries at this point. All right. Mm Mm-hmm. Well... You can't think of anything else to try and manipulate me no, into no, leaving? I'm trying to yes. find any, think of any other way or resource to help you out. Well, I, I don't understand yeah, why you would. You, you, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think of another place that you can take your van to and, and park it and not be as, be a little bit more discreet. Oh, you want me to be discreet? Where you, well, you, Do where, I seem like a discreet person? Where you will have more privacy. I had privacy until you knocked on my window. Yeah, well, just like I said, somebody <laughs> called us and you have to make sure everything's okay. Yeah, but when I call, I often don't even get a call back. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know mm-hmm. you, so I today's the first day that I that I met you, Celia. I can call the police and say somebody's threatened me, and they don't call me back. Yeah. But because somebody sees a minivan that they think is suspicious... You come. Over where I was parking, the police would come by. I made a video of a cop who was harassing me about parking uh-huh. uh, and marking my tires. And um, it's a, a, a violation of the Fourth Amendment to do that. And I uh, was in the car at the time that they were marking the tires. And so I got into it with him. And um, he said, oh, uh, I thought that that it was a man living in this minivan. And I said, well, I can provide evidence that I'm not a man. And and so all of these cops for a long time would come and knock on my window and say, we're looking for uh, this guy that uh, we're trying to find that's associated with a blue minivan. They would do that over and over again, including the sheriff's department that did it. They only did it one time, but Boise police department did that. That was a, you know, a LARP them harassing me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Julie, what, if you have any other questions, I'll, I'll leave you alone then. Please. All right. Mm-hmm. Have a good night. Bye bye now. Good God almighty. <laughs> For heaven's sakes. And he sat there for a long time. He was probably running my fucking plates. He sat there. He sat there and he was probably running my goddamn plates. Is probably what he was doing. Son of a bitch. He's trying to manipulate me into going somewhere else. I have a right to park wherever the fuck I want. And he's taking a picture of my car. Look at that. Taking a picture of my car. The son of a bitch came and took a picture of my car. He's trying to, like, act like... This is what they do here. They act like they want to help you with something. They ain't got nothing to help you with. To begin with, they lie their asses off and fuck all of them.